Felicitations! It's me, Felicia Day, and this is my podcast. Welcome! I am so sorry. I am uploading this very fast because, from the last episode, because I evidently put, I did upload last month's felicitation. I just never published it for some reason. I'm not sure exactly what happens. I use LibSync, and they have, like, the, they're on the fourth iteration of upload like interface. They've got LibSync like one and two and three and four. And so I think when they transition to yet another interface that they have, they have a brand new one this time because I, I saw it this morning. It looks great. Um, I think that I didn't scroll down to put publish, even though it said it was fully uploaded. So partially my bad, partially a UI problem, but I did make it public along with the October Geeks Hang out, and we will be doing the Silmarillion with Bonnie on our Geeks Book Club next week. So I have not had a lot of time to read, but I just did read the Silmarillion, and I'm going to be able to read it before next week because I know I as I'm going the Sil- I'm, as I'm going through it, I'm like you know a fourth of the way through now. I I've highlighted quite a, a lot, so I'm excited. I'm excited to just talk to everybody about it. So please join in if you're a Geeks member. Come on over on Tuesday, November twenty something. <laughs> Next week, last Tuesday of the month at 6.30 p.m. And then I will promise I will upload it very quickly, unlike last month. Okay. So anyway, anyway, it has been, I think I was pretty whiny last month because I was just exhausted. And I had just come off. I don't even remember what it was. If I look, I wish I had in my calendar, these were the days you were sick. Because then I can be like, oh, that's what happened to your weeks. Now, I, I send sympathy out to any other parents out there because, in fact, I know that every other parent is going through this now, especially with younger kids. It is, um, it's really hard because I think because of uh, two years of COVID, the kids didn't get exposed to as many g- um, germs in a broader way. And so ultimately, kids are getting way sicker. They're having a lot of respiratory issues as well. Um, I had just gotten home. You're right. I mean, I had just gotten home. I think I recorded just, who knows? Who knows? Anyway, so I will say that um, it's been a lot. And from getting sick, my partner got pneumonia, my kid was sick, and she's been probably sick three times since then. So it was just nonstop. And it continued to be nonstop until the end of October. And it, uh, yeah, it's been interesting. I can't say that I'm upset because I've been working on wonderful things. I'm certainly having a great year work-wise because the last two were slim pickings, I can tell you that, just like everybody. And so having this sort of bounty is great, but I, I really would, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I've had a couple days this month at least to clean my house, to get some logistical things done, like, I don't know, a teeth cleaning. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, really, it's really very nice. So thank you. Um, for just being along with the ride. I did, I think the biggest thing that I've done since last month is um, I threw a huge children's birth, uh, Halloween party. Now, Calliope, as other children I'm sure are, is obsessed with Halloween. It's her favorite year, time of year, and she loves it so much. So I told her, hey, do you want to have a Halloween party or a birthday party? Because I'm not going to give you both for your birthday. We'll go out to dinner. Maybe we'll go to a, you know, a theme park, whatever but I'm not doing a party twice. So I, um, I, I gave her the choice and she said, okay, let's do Halloween. So I went all out. I did go all out and she only wanted her preschool fam, um, her kids, her, the kids from her preschool to attend. So there are about seven or eight that she liked from that school. She's in kindergarten now. It's a lot harder for her to adjust. She's finally kind of settling into it. It is a Spanish immersion place. And I'm not sure if I'm going to keep her there next year. It's a lovely school, but, um, you know, it just depends on what your kid likes. So she is learning a lot of Spanish, but she's not really fluent at all like the other kids. So, you know, she's going through some stuff. So she wanted to see her other, um, friends and, uh, I did it. I'd rented a bounce house. I rented chairs. (laughs) I don't know why I'm excited about that, but I did rent chairs. I rented a snow cone machine, which in Los Angeles at the end of October is totally viable. I ordered special cakes that were decorated like zombies and mummies. And yes, I did. I got a small unicorn. Now, I'm a little embarrassed because it was the extravagant thing. But you'll be pleased to know that Snow Cup, which is the name of, or what's it, Snow Cone? 
I'm not sure. Anyway, it's Snow something. She's a celebrity unicorn. She's been in music videos. She's been, she, I was informed by the owner. She met the Kardashians. So if you see a small pony unicorn on some TV show with a rainbow rain, and um, by the way, it's a fake unicorn horn, but okay. She's a celebrity unicorn. So I did rent the celebrity unicorn to come. It was quite frankly, the most expensive thing that I did, but also the least appreciated by the children. So I think that in the future, I will phone it in with some pizza and a bounce house. And hell, I'll have a party every day of the week. So uh, I can't believe you just refused. <laughs> uh, I have a chat who's listening to me while I record this. And um, Boss Hogger got really, really shocked that I revealed that Snow Cone's um, unicorn horn was not real. I'm sorry. Anyway, she was not high maintenance. I will say that for a very famous unicorn, she was very sweet. I saw a lot of children getting a lot of photo ops in that carriage. It was, and then I also had a face painter. Yes, I went completely overboard. It was very dumb. I don't know why, but you know, I felt a lot of mother guilt because I had been traveling and working for the six weeks previous. I'd been away a lot. And every weekend I was having a convention or a speaking engagement. I was making up stuff from 2019. For some reason, everything just happened in October. And so I think I was making up for some guilt. And so anything that she said that she wanted at the party, I tried to get her. I did not get clowns or a contortionist. She did ask for circus people. And I was like, I'm drawing the line here. Our bu we are way over budget, kid. So it was great. And then the other's moms brought all the food. So if I could have figured out how to deduct that party, it would have been nice. But no, it was just a party for my kid. And I will be phoning in Christmas and her birthday in January. So there you go. It was a lot of work, though. And I cleaned my back porch off to the point where I was like, I could actually sit back here. And, you know, people say that they want to have like El Fresco dining and stuff. But I have a backdoor table. And there's so much squirrel barf and bird poop on it that I don't want. And, and. What am I supposed to do? I don't want to sit there. And there's also mosquitoes. There's still mosquitoes here in LA in November and I'm, it's driving me wild. So the whole thing about like, oh, you can have an outdoor living. No, unless you want to feed mosquitoes and, you know, have a disgusting experience. So I did hose everything off. I think I almost blew up the power washer. I don't know what's going on with it, but I think I burned the motor out and then I left it out in the rain. So I'm pretty sure I'm in the market for another power washer. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happened. I hooked it up, right? I thought. I haven't hooked it up in two years, and I just assumed that, you know, I remembered sense memory. Did not have it. It started making a weird noise and then shut off, and then it wouldn't turn on again. I was worried it was going to explode, and we we're all going to get shrapnel on our face, but the manufacturers did make it so that it wouldn't do that. It would just turn off. So, boy. Um... Oh boy, it's just something else. So that really was the stressful part of last month um, or this month as well, you know, because now we're, and now we're heavily into holiday season. I resent the fact that a week before Halloween, when I went out to get some additional decorations that nobody had, they, like, the I, I almost was like, where, where are you taking that target person? Oh, the Halloween stuff is being moved over here. It's Christmas now. And I almost, I almost blew a gasket. All right. That's not what you do. Give me at least until, I mean, Halloween. Where does, what is going on here? So it was a very good party. I'm never doing it again for these children. They could just fend for themselves, but it was very good. Um, I also have shot a bunch of stuff and recorded a bunch of stuff since. I, um, I also, so <laughs> November was supposed to be the slow month for me. And of course, what do I do? I jump into a bunch of charity initiatives. I'm putting a bunch of stuff online that I have that I want to be able to support um, places with. I'm doing a guild marathon, which might now have to move, even though I did all the planning, but because, because I have a job that week, perhaps. But anyway, there will be a guild marathon. I have it all timed out. We'll see if it actually happens in the timely manner that I want it to do, but I really want it to happen before Christmas. I got a pin up celebrating the 15th anniversary of the guild. It's a Cheesy Beards pin. If you go to shopstands.com, you'll see it on the front page. And all the profits will go to Girl, Girls Make Games. It is a, um, they're having a scholarship fund for kids, girls to go to their camps and to college. So it's just a general scholarship fund for all of their offerings, which is wonderful. And it is a tax deduction if you want to donate to the charity itself. And if you buy the pin, we're just given all the money after I pay the accountant to the um, 
place. So just check shop, shopstands.com. It's very cute. I also am do, I'm doing the, uh, the guild thing. So I have some stuff to give away during that. I have other stuff to take to the silent auction at my kid's school because there's a big event. And of course I'm doing that. I'm building them a library. So I cleaned out the, you know, with a bunch of other moms, we cleaned out the room, ordering stuff. Um, Walking Dead Last Mile, my wonderful hosting job that I've really enjoyed over the last three three months has ended, which is really sad. But wrapping it up was it was bittersweet, but it was uh, it was a wonderful crew. And having that end was kind of like, okay, one thing off my plate. And then I shot a bunch of stuff for Turkey Day. So me and Rebecca Hansen, uh, or Rebecca Hansen and I, are hosting Turkey Day this year. Who's playing? She plays Cynthia. And so if you go to thegizmoplex.com or any of the, you can watch it free all day and on demand. So that'll be really fun. So tune in on Thursday, November 24th or whatever. I don't know. Whenever um, Turkey Day is. Is it 24th? It's the 24th. It is exactly the 24th. Look at me. So, yeah. So it was really fun. And I had, oh, the, the Walking Dead was great. I, w I got to work with Yvette Nicole Brown, who is one of the most delightful professional people I've ever met. Trisha Hirschberger was on there with me. Uh, Matoki Maxid. I just had a lot of really great guests. And Maud Garrett. It was just delightful. And it was nice. You know, it was in the old Geek and Sundry um, uh, stages. Uh, and it was... I, I think I mentioned this before. When I drove in the first time, I really didn't notice the address. And I just followed my GPS and I started crying in the car. <laughs> it was uh, a lot of memories came back to me. And yet working in that stage for 16 weeks or 17 weeks or 18 weeks, however long we worked, it was so cathartic because I had a wonderful time creating with people. I felt really taken care of. Um, you know, it, and it wasn't on my shoulders. And I didn't feel guilty, you know, leaving ever. It, it was just, it was it really was psychologically healing to be in that space and create and have a good time with people. And so, you know, if anything I take away from that experience, it's that just kind of letting go of the past and any guilt and sadness and sort of emotional weight. Like it was nice to just be in the space and just let that all go. Really physically seeing that it's not there anymore. The company wasn't there. Nothing's there that was vivid in my mind. Um, because it was really hard to walk away from that. I felt very guilty and uh, conflicted for many years. I still have some of it, believe me. Um, but, you know, I, I think sometimes when you can kind of put something to bed, you can move on in life, and that's kind of how I feel. I'm not the same person I was back then when I left, what was it, five years ago? And it's, uh, I don't get to do the same stuff, which makes me, you know, bittersweet, bittersweet celebration in that respect. But there was a lot of things that went with it that were very hard to, for me to deal with. I think this version of me now would have probably been a lot more tuned in to how to protect myself and how to operate and, you know, be able to just establish some parameters. Like, you know, I, I guess I wasn't raised to kind of take care of myself and put myself, my own self, um, my health, you know, mental or physical first. I just really loved making things and making people happy and all of that. And that's a wonderful impulse, but you know, you have to protect yourself in order to take care of other people. And I, I think I kind of forgot that for many years during that time. Also not being able to recreate my own stuff. So I'm really happy now. And it was just a wonderful experience to say uh, adieu to. So there you go. So um, yeah, what else is going on? I, I don't know what to say. Oh, oh, oh. I know I mentioned this on the undressing episode that we recorded. I recorded that last night, so that'll go up pretty soon too. Episode eight. Um, I got Invisalign. I don't have it on my mouth yet, but I guess I'll get it in like two weeks. And I'm so excited, you guys. I committed and I was like, screw it. I'm just going to do this. So I have 26 trays that I'm going to be wearing. So I'm going to be wearing these for a year. So I guess next holiday season, I'll get them off. And I'm so, they have an app where you can see what your teeth are going to look at before and after. And you could also see like just um, a motion progression of from the side, from the bottom, from the front, what your teeth will look like. And it's super subtle, but it's going to be a big deal. And I, I'm very excited. If there's, there's a couple things, you know, about me being in a business where it's all about my looks, there are a couple things I've always been kind of like, ah, oh, I kind of wish that was different. And, um, you know, why just stay stuck in a, a thing? Just try something. It's not going to, 
I don't think I'm going to get a job or lose a job because I get Invisalign. You know, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference in my life, but it'll be good for my self-confidence. And I think that's ultimately why you should mess with your face or your body or whatever. Like my self-confidence would be higher if I was just a little bit more fit. And so I just need to commit to that. I've been trying, but November, I was trying to do NaNoWriMo. There's some wonderful people on my forum. Um, I mean, the Discord who are doing it and really sticking with it. I got like a week in and then I just started working so much. I have fallen off and I was doing working out before and then writing for it, like working out for 30 minutes and then writing for an hour. And three days in a row, I was like, oh, this is it. This is my dream. I feel functional. I feel like I'm in control of my life and my body and my mind and my creativity. And then just stuff happened. Kid was sick. There's weekends. I have jobs, blah, blah, blah. You know, I can't help life interfering, but I can the first time I, I, I'm able to get back on the wagon. So anyway, I cannot wait to take some pictures with the Invisalign. It's going to be super cool. And I know that you know, as someone who lisps, it's already going to be hard. So the good thing is I get a whole month to kind of train my mouth to work a little bit better. Um, anyway, yeah. So I will be in Wales at the Wales Comic Con. Is that the name of it? Let me look. I'm very excited. Um, because yeah, Wales Comic Con, I'll be there. Um, the first weekend it's in Wrexham. I don't know exactly where Wrexham is. Um, Oh, Telford. I'm going to be ta uh, be in Telford. Okay, so where is that? No idea. It's not in Wales, I heard, which is kind of a disappointment because I've never been to Wales and I really wanted to go to Wales. But whatever. Um, I'm there Saturday and Sunday. And there's some really cool people. Dr Danny Trejo is going to be there. Christopher Eccleston. George Takei. Um, Andrew Scott. So pretty cool. There's a lot of guests there. So I think, you know, if you're in the area, which I don't even know where I'm going, <laughs> Malcolm McDowell. Um, yeah, there's a lot of really cool. Nick Frost is going to be there. <gasps> I love him. Now I'm just looking at the list. Um, oh, Ethan Peck from Star Trek. He, oh, charming, charming person. Anson Mount. I've never met him. I'm going to definitely want to. Oh, Mark Shepard's going to be there too. Sophia Nomvete from the Rings of Power. Oh, good. Look at this. I'm looking at the live reactions. Amy Acker. This is exciting. I'm just seeing a lot of people on here that I'm very excited to see. Troy Baker's going to be there. <gasps> Fun. Yeah, so we have a lot of really cool um, guests here. My goodness. A lot of guests. This must be a big convention. I don't know where. I, I don't know. I don't. I mean, there's a lot of really cool people on this list. So anyway, if you're in the, in the area, just come on by. So let's see. That's it. That's all I got. Now, I want to uh, remind you that the Geeks Book Club for November is The Silmarillion by Col Tolkien. I want to give another shout out to Dungeon Crawler Carl by Matt Dinneman. I read all five books and I haven't gotten into a book jag like that in a while. I just, I, all I could think about all day was to get to sit down and read those books. They're so funny. And I heard that the audiobooks are fantastic. So I think I'm going to download the first audiobook just to listen to how the guy narrates. I also bought a shirt. I think they have merch now. So I got a goddamn it donut shirt. I'm like a, a huge fan. So I do highly recommend it. Um, I've tried several other game lit books since then, and they are just not my style. They're not, you know, I mentioned a couple last year that I really enjoyed um, that uh, the wandering in and the one about the teddy bear. Those are the two others that I'm like, those are standouts. But, you know, it's one of those things where so, you can you can tell that some people are just uploading a, a first draft of their novel and they don't really have an editor. Um, but there's some cool ideas in it. So anyway, really cool uh, series. I, I definitely urge you to check it out. For TV, I'm just watching The Sandman. I have no time for TV right now. The, the, the highlight of my week is watching British Baking Show and getting any gaming in. God of War Ragnarok came out, so I've been streaming that. I also streamed a game called The Case of the Golden Isle Idol, which is a cool um, kind of flashback uh, click and, uh, and point adventure. It's very old-fashioned. It's really, really fun. I played it because for some reason my capture card wasn't working. So, But if you, you have a PS5 or 4, like just get Ragnarok. It's such a good game. It's like living a movie. And I really enjoyed it. I got to do the recap commercial. And now I see why everybody thought I was Faye because my hair 
is the same color as the actresses who plays Faye, who is Deborah Ann Wall. And she looks wonderful, but um, her hair is the same exact color as mine. So, and I actually am standing in a window very similar to Faye. So I can see why a lot of people thought I was Faye. I mean, I would love to be Faye, but you know, whatever you do, I got to do that wonderful recap. So watch it before you play. Okay, I have some questions that I can dive into. I can say it is, oh, please mail. With Thanksgiving next week, what are you thankful for from this past year? And what are you hoping for, or looking forward to in the coming year? Thank you, Cleves Mill. So, wow, that's a really good question, Cleves Mill. I, I'm really thankful that, hmm, I have a couple things. I'm thankful that I let go of a lot of expectations and sort of metrics that I had for myself that were sort of arbitrary. And I've let go of my need to sort of succeed where I wasn't succeeding before. And I've found a new set of passions. And I found a new rhythm with the wonderful work that I've gotten this year. I've done a lot of hosting, which was something I never wanted to do before. And because quite frankly, without Lexapro, I would be too nervous about it. And so now that I have um, I, a treatment for my anxiety, um, that just everything else that I tried never worked. By the way, speaking of Lexapro, I want to just throw this out there because this is a very strange thing that happened to me the last couple of weeks. So uh, as you know, that I, I was struggling figuring out some other uh, drugs that I was trying to take. Um, Prestique I took for a little while, Zoloft. All of it was terrible. It would make me really jittery and not be able to sleep. And I just couldn't endure it anymore. So I switched back to Lexapro. The, it started working pretty good. And, and yet I was sick like half the time and traveling. I was taking like a little bit of Xanax to help me sleep when I travel because I can't sleep the first night. And it just kept getting worse and worse, my sleep. Even though it was okay, it was just this really shallow sleep where I kept waking up. And because I was watching my dreams so vividly, this happened before with Lexapro, but this was like to an extreme that I've never had before. I was not really functioning. And then I started getting super overwhelmed all the time about like, too many tasks, too many things, not being able to multitask, thinking that something that happened in a dream was re real. It was very weird. Like, so I, I finally was like, I'm going to call my doctor and like, we got to stop this. Like, we just got to. Then, you know what I did? I had some um, of my old prescription from a different pharmacy that was the same drug. It's a different generic though. And I started, I was like, okay, I have an appointment next week. I'll just start taking this. Y'all, Within three days, all of my um, all of my anxiety and my sleep issues were gone, and my back stopped hurting a lot. So as you know, that I've had really bad back problems for the last three months. That, by the way, coincided with taking that new that Lexapro. So this is completely anecdotal on my part, and this and I'm very sensitive medication. This happened when I was uh, had a thyroid disorder like many years ago. The, the pharmacy changed generics and I was taking same pharmacy, same prescription. It gave me heart palpitations. Then my doctor was like, yeah, this happens sometimes when people change, you know, from generic to generic. The generics are supposed to be exactly the same. They say within 80%. Clearly something in this other generic that I was taking was really disagreeing with me because like a week in now, uh, going to the other pills, I'm all the problems that I was having are gone. In fact, I'm almost too sleepy. Um, I'm so... I don't know. Yeah, it could have been the stress because I wasn't sleeping that was hurting my back, but I'm so much better now. And so I just want to put that out into the world. Um, if your pills look different, you might have changed. You know, a lot of people are not sensitive enough to do it, but I'm super, super sensitive with all medication. And so I just found this to be completely rev revelatory. I'm so happy because I didn't want to go off the Lexapro because, quite frankly, my anxiety works, you know, works overtime when I'm in big crowds, especially when I'm working on set and especially when I'm hosting live, that is when, you know, you, if you mess up, you mess up, right? So uh, I'm seeing some in my chat who are listening to me saying that I've been sensitive to different generic, genetic, generic versions of the same drug too. That's amazing. So um, yeah, I really just wanted to throw that out there. Anywho, I'm thankful that I'm dealing with a lot of my issues in a really proactive manner. And I am not afraid of the consequences of committing to something that might close a door somewhere else when I'm certain, more certain and more committed to just YOLOing it and just being free to make mistakes or just follow a path and see what happens. 
I think that's the biggest thing. I'm thankful for my kid. You know, for the first four years of her life or almost five years, she I had a, a, a nanny who helped me out. I couldn't have done what I did, but um, uh, my nanny moved away and my kid started school, but like with her being sick and, you know, other school closures, we're allow- around each other a lot more. And my time is a lot more limited now, but I am so grateful for having more time with my kid and being her primary person and just sacrificing other things in my week just to be more with her because she is so fabulous. She's one of the most interesting people I've ever met and she'll never be five again. And I don't regret, you know, having help when she was smaller. I was, you know, struggling as it was, but um, I'm really committed to being the kind of mom that I wish I had when I was a kid. Um, just, just, you know, just there for her. I mean, not that my mom wasn't there for me, but um, I just really want to be, you know, very integrated with her, but also like help her find her path. And I think the next couple of years will, you know, she'll, she won't want to hang out with me, with me when she's eight. So this is the time for us to be tooling around and traveling together and just enjoying each other. So, um, yeah, it's, it's great. So thank you for that question. I am very grateful for just being able to keep doing what I'm doing and the community and the joy of, of streaming. Like I, like I said, I had a, I had a person ask me, why do you stream? It's not like you're a professional. You're not making your income from that. I'm like, um, you know, I love it. So it's not a waste of my time. It's absolutely something I love. And it allowed me to give a lot of money to charity, you guys. Allowed me to justify playing games and all of that. So I want to thank you guys for that and just being around and just keeping me loyal to what really matters, which is like smaller stuff, especially with Twitter going down. I mean, downtown in a very bad way. It really, I mean, I really um, am getting a lot more satisfaction focusing on things that are in the present that I can actually, you know, tangibly see and connect with. So like, you know, there might be 40 people at one time listening to uh, to this podcast live or whatever in the geeks community. But like, I'll know all those people. And if I meet any of those people in person, I'll be so delighted because I know them as a real person, you know? Um, and the same thing with uh, working on the library at the school, like I'm making a difference in some kid's life. And cleaning up trash. I've like made a habit of just picking up trash whenever I see it on the road. And I know that's so weird, but in a world where we're so overwhelmed with so much information that we can't do anything about, so many problems we can't physically do anything about, just taking stock and taking control of the small things and contributing to my locality. I don't know. There's something really satisfying about that, especially now that Twitter is showing that this ephemeral, you know, millions of people who follow me, yes, there are people out there. Um, but they could take that, they could unplug that connection to people instantly. And it's very upsetting because A, it's it's one of my passions. I love it. I love social media. I love connecting with people. B, it's part of my job. And C, why are we beholden to some um, clearly not well thought out plan of somebody's whims? It's just, I'm so sick of billionaires. I don't want to hear about them. Did we ever listen, hear about billionaires 10 years ago? No, it was just like they were there. Now there's just like all these billionaires. What are they doing with this money? Give me some. I'll build a playground. Jesus. All right. Okay. DK Mango Pickle asks, I think you've been a great in a Hallmark Lifetime holiday movie. I think the recent ones are not as tight or corny as they've been and diverse casts and tighter plots. Have you recent opportunities for it? All right, DK. I was offered a Hallmark uh, Christmas movie back in the day, right after Red Werewolf Hunter. I turned it down because I didn't want to be away from my family. It was the stupidest thing I've ever done because I could have gotten in that wheelhouse. I I came up with a story. Like Gary Witta, who wrote Rogue One, came up with a story and developed one, uh, a Christmas movie for a nerdy Christmas movie for um, Netflix. They shifted their, we had creative differences. They shifted their model a lot. And so we got it in turnaround and we're trying to maybe set it up somewhere else. But who knows if it'll ever work. I love the Christmas movies. I told my last agents um, and managers that I wanted to be in one and they acted like I had just pooped on the ground. It was not, they didn't understand. And I asked, please get me an interview with these people. Never did it. I don't have any uh, managers or agents right now. Um, I have it for three years in those, in those areas. But let me just tell you, I'm going to get a new one in January. And the first thing I'm going to say, I want to be in a Christmas movie. Hopefully my Invisalign will just get me there. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. 
LBM asks, you mentioned on Twitch that you're going to start with Invisalign soon. I already told that story. What made you choose this option and what results will you achieve with it versus the jaw surgery and braces option? Okay, so I'll go into this because I love talking about it. The jaw surgery was, let me think, $24,000 out of pocket, no coverage of insurance. And it wasn't necessarily a functionality problem. It was be purely kind of cosmetic. I mean, it would make me look, it would change the shape of my face completely. I already hold my my jaw forward when I talk. So it's not like I'm in danger of getting like problems, you know, there. Um, the only reason I went was because the Lexapro made me um, grind my jaw so hard. In fact, that's kind of gone away now that I've, um, again, I'm not grinding quite as hard. And um, so anyway, that was the big difference was price. Because I have a child, I'd rather the money go to her in every way than spend it on moving my jaws. Also, they would have to do both my jaws because my, my, my top jaw is very, very narrow. And my bottom one is like literally almost an inch back, you know, at least a centimeter. So they would have to move it forward quite a bit. I would have um, two weeks of not being able to do anything with my jaw. Um, two months uh, where I had liquid diet and six months until full recovery, supposedly, with no problem. So clearly, I can't be doing that. You know, I am a woman of a certain age. and. I am not going to put aside my the probably the last of my career in Hollywood, um, you know, the last several years. I can't take six months off. I can't take two months off. I don't want to. And also, it's just major, major surgery for not maybe not the right reasons. My Invisalign is going to sort of make my bite and my teeth function a little bit better. They're going to realign them a little bit. And um, um, and it's going to just straighten them a little bit. So they'll be. Um, you'll be able to see the side ones a little bit more because I have such a deep, anyway, it's going to be great. And if it isn't, it was a fraction of the cost of moving my, and the fraction of the hassle, right? It'll be a year of my life. And also I can't have like metal braces on my mouth because I can't, again, I'm an actor. So also I just, I don't know. I just didn't want to go, go through it either. It's a big surgery. It's a big deal. So we'll see. All right, last question. Rocket Soup asks, when, were, when you were getting your math degree, did people know Felicia has a math degree? Felicia has a math degree. Thank you. Was there a math concept you struggled with but nonetheless loved? I'm a big fan of quaternions, even though I barely, barely understand them. P.S. Felicia has a math degree. Thank you so much, Rocket Soup. I will say that um, even nowadays, I wish I read many, many books on string theory. I couldn't tell you the first thing about it. I mean, I, I read a couple books by, is it Machu? Who's the guy who writes... Um, those great books. He did one on string theory that was actually almost um, un understandable, but then I forgot all of it because I read it and then I just moved on. It's not like something that's going to stay in your brain because you're never going to access it. I also struggle a lot with vectors, um, vector uh, analysis and stuff like that. My, I, my favorite part of, I really like geometry and topology. I think those visual um, elements really clicked with me. From a young age, I really wanted to visualize the fourth dimension. And I had this book called Visualizing the Fourth Dimension. And I was like, I'm going to do it. And so I'd sit there just kind of like tripping in my mind as a, like a nine-year-old trying to be like, ooh, I could visualize the fourth. I could visualize seeing myself as a whole. Um, never really got there either. But yeah, you know, there's always things that kind of best you. Real analysis was really my, I did not like it. And I certainly wasn't that great at it. The fact that I eked out. Um, a good grade was uh, actually a phenomenon. And the teacher was really condescending to me and a jerk. And he really treated me like crap. And I don't know if it was, I, I was the only girl in the class. I have no idea. Maybe it was a suck up. Maybe it was annoying. Who knows? But he was a dick. I'll say that out loud. Um, it's Michio Kaku. Yes. Michio Kaku. Yes. All of his books on physics and, and math are, are wonderfully written. I would say um, very, very, I loved calculus. I definitely understood it. There's a there's a series of books, y'all, called Bob Miller, Bob Miller Calculus. Can't, let me look this up. Maybe sure. Anyway, Bob Miller Calculus. That I love these books more than anything. It is they were so good. Calc One Helper. There it is. Bob Miller's Calc One Helper. Look at it, and it made calculus so easy for me. The way he taught this is just phenomenally wonderful. And I was, I, you know, I tried to teach my, as you, as you know, I taught myself everything. 
Um, and I, t I tried other books and I was just lost. And somehow my mom bought me this book and I used it. He has Calc 1, he has Calc 2. This guy is amazing. And he also, oh, he has Calc for the Clueless, Calc 3. So he's got 1, 2, and 3. Um, anyway, wow, this really, really brings back memories. Look at this guy. I want, I want to see what else he, he wrote. I wish he'd do one for kids. I want a good math book for my kid because she is like, mama, I don't like school, but I do like Mathematica. So she loves Mathematica. And this is not me. And I was like, I love Mathematica too. So she really loves her Mathematica class, you know, in, in school. It's really, really sweet. Visualize the fourth dimension book for nine-year-olds. It's Rudy Rucker. Visualizing the fourth dimension, okay? If you guys want to do that. Rudy Rucker also wrote some um, very naughty <laughs> science fiction. <laughs> very naughty. As a child, I was like, oh, Rudy Rucker, one of my favorite math writers. And then I was like, oh, what is this? Yeah. The fourth dimension, a guided tour of the higher universes. Rudy Rucker. Um, there was, he also wrote a book called Spaceland. It was a novel, too. So he's written a lot of nonfiction and, not, and fiction. He also read a book called Mind Tools, The Five Levels of Mathematical Reality that I really liked as a kid. Um, yeah, I was a real, I was a real fun, fun girl. <laughs> anyway, uh, don't read his fiction with um, a little bit of caution. That's all I got to say. <laughs> all right. Well, that's it, y'all. I hope that you enjoyed listening to this podcast. We are gearing up for the holidays. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And I give thanks to all of you listeners who keep me going with this podcast. I know it's been up and down and left and right over the years, but we're on our fifth year of this podcast and I'm really glad I do it. I'm really glad I could just kind of vomit into a mic once a month. It's, uh, it's kind of nice. And to my live audience who listens every month, thank you so much for your support as well. And we will see you next month for our holiday holiday edition. And God bless all of you. Boy, oh boy. I don't want to get into presents at all. Ugh. All right, bye.